The story of Elijah and the ravens pulls on multiple threads from God's story of salvation. Along with the owl, the pelican, and the ostrich, the raven marks the desolation of Edom. It craves the wandering eye. Ravens are a sign of wildness and lost dominion. As such, ravens were forbidden as food for the Israelites. The location of Elijah's refuge with ravens is also familiar. The brook of Cherith is east of the Jordan, a place that Lot had discovered is well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord. Lot cannot resist it and settles there, as do some of the tribes of Israel, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben. This land east of the Jordan may seem enticing then, but it is an unsettling place, a land of incompleteness. After Lot, Moses leads the Israelites to this place, but is not allowed to cross over the Jordan as punishment for striking the rock. In this same place then, even though the ravens provide Elijah with bread and meat, this true prophet of God cannot stay there. The waters soon dry up and the Lord tells him to move on. As it happens, God has told parts of this story before, and the raven plays a part there as well. At the end of Genesis 7, Noah and his family are in the ark, they alone with the animals saved through God's watery judgment of the whole world. And at this point, something curious happens, a kind of mirroring of heaven and earth. The text says that God remembered Noah and his family and all the animals. And just as the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters at the creation of the world, God causes a wind to pass over the flooded earth and the waters subside. The ark comes to rest upon the mountains of Ararat. Noah responds to this supernatural act of God by sending out the raven. And like the wind of God, like the ravens that would feed Elijah, Noah's raven flew here and there until the water was dried up from the earth. As the raven wanders, before the flood waters dry up, Noah releases another bird, a dove. Though she too finds no resting place, the dove returns, and Noah sends her out again and again until she brings the olive leaf of peace and flies away to her rest, awaiting her descent to Jesus Christ at his baptism. In the raven and the dove, we encounter restlessness and rest, earth and heaven, here and there. And though we are fixed anxiously between the two, in Jesus Christ, the dove and raven meet in perfect peace. In him, we encounter rest for our restless hearts.